Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Before I start, can I just say, um, this is for me a great pleasure to be in the symposium to be in and so lekker om all my friends from today here to see. So now you know I'm African speaking, so I will try my best with English. Bear with me, please. Um, yes, the original sketches I want to uh, provide Ian with it to preserve in the library. But it all came about because I'm an amateur and I'm sitting and um, doing observations through my telescope in beautiful dark skies. Um, feeling a little bit lonely between all the ITs and the professionals today, but I am doing observations through my ordinary telescope in very dark skies, which is beautiful. I, I, I can really um, enjoy myself. And what I did then is that I made sketches sitting at my telescope of all the objects that I observe. So I have I had a great love for sketching. And it actually told me more than what a picture can tell. So the original sketches come about because uh, when I was working on the book, I decided to use the 23 observe, um, old observe, um, astronomers that I had a little bit of history in the book and I just love the old astronomers. So I decided to call on a lady and her name is Catherine. And uh, she is a master with the pencil and paper. You cannot believe it. I sit with her and I give her some pictures of this 23 astronomers. And this photograph, or sketch actually, come to life as she sketches. And it was such, so beautiful to me that I decided to uh, preserve it. Let's start with uh, George Abel. I'm just going to read a few uh, stuff for you. He found hints of galaxy superclusters while searching for them on photographic plates of the Palomar uh, Observatory Sky Survey. He analyzed their formation and evolution, and Abel also discovered the Rudolph Comet uh, 82P Harrington Abel and correctly determined that planetary nebula uh, evolve from great giant stars. Now, um, asteroid 3449 were named in his honor, and as well as the Milton Key, um, that was the first major catal catalog of the rich galaxy clusters. Now, if you look at this photograph, and I promise you, this is done with only paper and a pencil. So it shows you how wonderful this lady can do it. It's, it's just masterpieces. Uh, going on to, uh, to, to Edward Barnard, using a wide field lenses and a 42-inch Bruch Bruce telescope at Mount Wilson Observatory. And uh, these show dark clouds, structures, rifts, and holes where there were only few stars visible. He compiled a catalog of the more prominent dark clouds called Atlas of select, Selected uh, Regions of the Milky Way, which was only published in 1927 after his death. And further on, he discovered the, the fifth uh, Jovian moon in uh, 1892. And he's best known for his discovery of Barnard Star, of course. And I searched for Gardner's star the other day, and I could see how it moved in 10 years. And it was quite amazing to see that. Uh, he died on 6 February 1923 uh, in Williams Bay and was buried at Mount Olivet uh, Cemetery in Nashville. Now, the next one is actually John. I don't know where I am now. Or not. Okay, the next one is uh, John. Uh, Bennett. Uh, very little people know that you know, his name is actually John, but we call him Jack. Um, he was an accomplished amateur astronomer, a comet hunter, as you previously know from one of the other speakers, and uh, who patrolled the skies in the late 1960s. He picked up a magnitude 9 supernova star, 
um, known as Messier 83, becoming the first person ever to, to discover a supernova since the invention of the telescope. That's why I love all the astronomers. They, they do amazing work, see, work seeing that, the, the stuff that they had available at the time. Uh, then he was president in, uh, in 1669. The Society awarded him the prestigious Jewel Medal for service to astronomy in 97. And then, of course, the comets. And uh, in 1989, at the recommendation of uh, Robert Knott of Silent Spring uh, Observatory, the asteroid VD493 was named after him. And then he compiled the catalog, uh, Bennett catalog, uh, which I really want the amateurs to look at. It's a very nice project to, uh, to attach. Um, yes, and he, his catalog's got, got 152 objects. And look again at his photograph, or his sketch, actually. And I hope you agree with me, it's better than a photograph. <laughs> The French astronomer observed the southern skies during his stay at the Cape of Good Hope from 1751 to 53 using a small half an inch reflector. Then I know how happy I am, or lucky I am at the moment. He measured the position of nearly a thousand stars, or is it more Ian? I think it's more now. But he also um, named 40 new constellations, as you all know, the Carina Nebula, uh, the catalogue of uh, Nebula of the Southern Skies, which was published in 1763. Now, the crater Lucky Hole on the Moon was named after him, as well as the asteroid 9135 Lucky Hole. In honour of his contribution to the study of the Southern Hemisphere sky, a 16-centimetre telescope at Reunion Island will be named after him. And he was actually regarded as the father of the Southern Hemisphere. Now Mr Dunlop, James Dunlop, the Scotchman, was described as slender with a pale complexion, searching the southern skies for nebula and clusters in Australia. Dunlop constructed the telescope himself, making the, mir the mirror of uh, burnished metal, speculum, and using methods similar to, the, to those of William Herschel. And by March 1826, he had completed the catalog of nearly 4,000 stars. His sky survey produced also a catalogue with 629 deep sky objects, uh, which been called the catalogue of nebula of, and cluster, clusters of stars in the southern hemisphere. He was, uh, well, he was awarded the prestigious gold medal of the London Royal America Astronomical Society in 1828, and he was died on 23 September 1848 and is perhaps remembered best as the messiah of the southern skies. And um, Brian uh, actually mentioned one time I had a speech at one of the symposiums about uh, James Dunlop's objects, and Brian over there just um, made a tent that there was a little bit of controversial because a lot of his objects couldn't be found by John Herschel afterwards. But I love his sketch, I must say. And then darling Albert Einstein. He was the only son, a quiet and, and rather solitary child, um, preferring to read and listen to music. Now Einstein's theory developed in 1905, and I didn't have to explain it all to you because most of the professionals will know his theory very well. But the first paper of the, uh, first of the papers was on the quantum theory of light, uh, focusing on um, electronic effects for which he awarded the, the Nobel Prize. Even when he was gravely ill, he asked for his test pages of the mathematical calculations. 
Einstein died, died peacefully on 18 April 1955 in Princeton, New Jersey. He requested his will. There were no funeral, no grave, and no marker. His ashes spread over a nearby river. Now I read somewhere that um, the nurse right next to his bed while he was dying was a German, uh, was an American uh, girl, and Einstein, his last words were in German, and it went just lost because nobody now she couldn't understand him, so she didn't know what he was saying. You all know Anthony Farrell, and I must first say uh, thank you very much, Krista Quinnen, um, because my flight was delayed yesterday, and uh, I never had the opportunity to visit the planetarium here in Cape Town, and uh, Chris waited for me, rushing from the airport to be at the uh, planetarium yesterday. And I must say, I feel very sad when I walk through there, and I and I think about Anthony Tony, as we know him, uh, walking down the passage there and uh, in his footsteps. But under supervision of David Evans, he completed the project on quasars and anti-quasar stellar galaxies in 1966. Now he accomplished his PhD and then in 1970 he elected at the newly formed Department of Astronomy at UCT. And uh, his major, major uh, photographic survey and he discovered the most active, active um, ciphered galaxy, which has been called um, Feral 9, named in his honor. In, eight, in 1988, he beca became director of the re renovated Cape Town Planetarium, a post he held for 70 years. Now, Feral, as you know, died after a diving accident in Hope Bay, South Africa on 29 November 2008. And that is sad, but uh, I just want to remember him. And then there's Galileo Galilei, um, and I enjoy most of all one of Ian Glass's uh, presentations one at one of the symposiums about Galilei. Uh, he moved to the University of Padua in 1597 construct uh, the geometrical and scientific instruments and also design a new type of military compass. So then he invented the telescope and using it and made the most striking discovery on 7 January 1610 concerning the four large satellite moons circling around the planet Jupiter. We are going to go into all it by, by means of the telescope Galileo arrived at the conviction that the surface of the moon is not smooth and uniform. Sadly, the objective uh, lens of his favorite telescope fell to the floor and broke into several pieces a few years before his death. Uh, well, his famous publication, The Cyber Messenger, was published in March 1610. And this is how Catherine uh, drew Galileo. And then uh, the next one is, of course, Edmund Halley. As a child, was very interested in mathematics and studied at St. Paul's School and then from 1673 at the Queen's College, Oxford. He published papers on the solar system and sunspots, and he's best known for uh, computing the orb orbit of the now, now famous comet Halley. He uses on, on, um, Isaac Newton's law of gravity to make the first accurate pred prediction of a solar eclipse in 1676. Now Halley visited the South Atlantic island of St. Helena and published the result which included details of an uh, 341 southern stars. Um, I was there in Oxford at the time and I went to his house, which is still in his original form, right next to the beautiful old city of Oxford uh, with its imposing uh, buildings. 
and uh, this is a more detailed photograph of him. And then uh, Mr. Hansen, as we called him, Carl Hensis, died on 5 of October 1993 from high altitude sickness on the slopes of Mount Everest while attempting to climb the peak. Hensen was an astronomer, space scientist, and earned his PhD in astronomy from the University of Michigan. Um, he was also an astronaut who had to wait 18 years before he could uh, fly for a flight. And, and then during 1950, Enzo worked at the Bloemfontein La Montaise Observatory. And his old observatory is still right next to the dome that um, one of the guys uh, point out there. Um, his nebula is, of course, um, wonderful objects. I try my, my uttermost best to search for them. Some of them are very faint, but you can see some of them. And he compiled a catalogue of over 2,000 objects, mainly planetary nebula. In coordinates with his previous expressed wishes, he was buried on Mount Everest. Now, uh, when Catherine was busy with this sketch, she ring me up and she tell me I'm busy with Mr. Hansen at the, uh, at the moment, so you can see why. Next one is Carol, uh, Carolyn Herschel. And uh, I try my best to look for as most female astronomers I could find to just boost me up a little bit. But <laughs> Carolyn Herschel was rescued from household tragedy in Hanover and brought to Bath in England by her brother William. Her selfishness and assistance enabled her brother William and his son John to leave the astronomical world a rich heritage. Now, of course, she discovered a few comets and, um, and she discovered, I think it was eight comets and a few galaxies and a handful of deep sky objects. In 18 35, the Royal Society selected her to honorary fellowship. She had an expert knowledge of astronomy and um, was one of the greatest of observers of her time. What an incredible lady. Now, her brother William, very well known. Um, he moved to England and settled in Bath and, uh, of course, he discovered on 13 March 1781, the planet Uranus, and a new, a new world that was first shown through the light of a telescope. And now he began his famous review of the heavens and discovered thousands of double stars, nebula, etc. And uh, very respected and slow and given an honorary resting place on the church floor between the, the altar. Now, the Latin inscription on the stone reads, he broke through the barriers of the heavens. And that is, to me, one of the greatest words ever spoken. And for as long as humanity, humanity lost, William Herschel will never be forgotten. And for me, it was one of my uh, um, moments that I will never forget this going by slow train, fast train, taxi driver, and the taxi driver asked me, lady, where are you want to go? I said, oh, to the oldest church in Slough, because I didn't know where the church was. He said to me, but lady, there's a lot of old churches in Slough. Which one could it be? And I said, the one where William, the astronomer, has been buried. So he took me there, and it was to me one of the greatest feelings to just touch his, his stone inlay in the ground in front of the Pillars. And there is. <clears throat> Next, his son, um, I believe at the moment, Ocus, uh, he's the one who loved this man the most. <laughs> this, this is the father, not the son. You just need the son. Oh, Oh, I've got the two round. Okay, sorry, it's my papers. <laughs> it's my papers, sorry. <laughs> sorry for that. Pretty um, back. Okay, this was John, sorry, y'all. <clears throat> I just had it the other way around. Sorry about that one. 
Any case, uh, John Herschel was the only son of William, and like his father also, he dedicated his life to astronomy. Uh, incidentally, he could easily have found the planet Neptune, because on 14 July 1830, one of his sweeps took him within half a degree um, of the then <coughs> unknown planet. Now, John Herschel spent the years 1834 to 1838 sur surveying the sun and stars at the Cape of Good Hope. He completed his father's William a uh, great task and in 1864 published a catalogue of over 5,000 nebula and clusters. He was also the president of the Royal Astronomy Society of, in 1848. And John was a remarkable, pleasant, pleasant and friendly person, according to <coughs> documentation. <coughs> and of course, a very good asset to the sun, Southern Hemisphere for us. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, right, now we're going over to, uh, to Ellen Hofflet. She was an American senior research astronomer at Yale University who spent 70 years searching the heavens. She studied at uh, uh, Radcliffe, um, Radcliffe and received a doctorate from Harvard. Uh, she worked, uh, of course, under, uh, under Arona Sharpley. She discovered the optical variability of the first discovered quasar 3C273. Hofflet is also renowned for her work on two star catalogues, including the Yale Catalogue of Bright and Near Stars, which includes crucial information on all stars visible to the naked eye. She pinned down the history called um, Astronomy at Yale, which cover over two, uh, two, 250 years in total. Now, when Hoffley died in 2007, she was just turned 100. And luckily for me, I made contact with her before she died. And um, in the post, I received a, a parcel. And when I opened it, it was her book. And inside her book, she, she wrote me a letter in her, her handwriting that how pleased she is that I enjoy the night skies and look through my telescope and enjoy the night, uh, doing valuable work. And another thing is about um, her is that, no, it's not her, sorry, it's another one. I'll come back. Um, Arthur Robert Hoch, he was uh, studied at the University of Melbourne and graduated with a Master of Science degree in 1925. He joined the Commonwealth um, Observatory in 1929 and undertook research into atmospheric electricity before he came in, astro uh, in astro astronomy at the age of 43. Now, um, he um, helped to choose the, the Siding Spring site, established the, the, the 74 inch telescope, and uh, which he remained at the CSO for the rest of his life, which later changed to the name to Mount Stormer. Now, uh, this is the one I want to tell you about. Uh, when I start doing the Hoch pro project with 23 open clusters, um, I actually had the wrong Hoch. I had Helen Hoch in my mind. So I um, start emailing David Hoch. And at one moment at time, David wrote me a letter. He said to me, he never realized that his mother was looking at open clusters. So. <laughs> Things like that can happen, but it made my life very interesting. You know, there is a, a close-up of him. Now, Mr. Edwin Hubble. Uh, he studied law at Oxford, Oxford, but soon turned to astronomy as a graduate stu student at the Yerkes Observatory at the Chicago Observatory. Is. Now, Hubble studied, as all know, the, sh the shepherd variables and reveal that spiral nebula are really separate galaxies at extreme distances. 
and also that the universe is expanding and increases with this, this distance. He developed a classification system for Gallic uh, structures based on the turning fork, or, uh, although it's been changing uh, altogether now, but it was at that time it was the norm. He died of a heart attack in San Marino, California on 28 September 1953. Now the, the famous Hubble Space Telescope was named in his honor. Then we go to someone who stayed close to me and uh, I visit his uh, old observatory uh, a while ago and um, declare it a local monument at the moment. He was Cyril Jackson and he was educated at the Forest High School Johannesburg becoming the first Dukes. In 1922 he studied further at the University of Alcatraz Run and appointed at the Union Observatory in 1928. Now in April 1929, Jackson discovered his first uh, minor planet, and I believe for at that time, it is one of the most uh, 72 new minor planets, which of course given all typical South African names. Now Jackson found an unidentified object. I also had one, I sketched one night a galaxy and afterwards I didn't um, note it down. So I've got an, an, an object, <laughs> well, I don't know what it is. Excuse me, Michael. Yes. How many slides we get? Uh, a few, two, three. <laughs> there is a concern that the public may gobble up our food. So. So, Okay, I'll go quickly. I'll go, I'll go quickly then. <laughs> okay, this is Cyril Jackson then. Okay, and the next one is uh, Le Ferrier, so you all know about him. He discovered the planet Net uh, Neptune. And um, yeah, he died in Paris, France. I've got a lot to say about him, I hope that you all can read a little bit quickly. And this is a close up of Le Ferrier. And then we've got Charles Messier, and everybody's knowing him, and of course he is a, has a, a got his catalogue, which is very nice to do. And then um, Dali Wurfelberg, which I just love, when I found him, usually when I found him he was just say Dali, and then I know I was at the right place. And it's very sorry that he died. And, um, there was also a minor planet named after him. And then another lady, Paris uh, Bismus, and uh, she was a Turkish astronomer, of course, and uh, she also received a, a few um, 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 prizes, and um, also had a catalogue of 24 um, objects. Hilo Sharpley was offered the directorship at Harvard in 1921. Um, what was he for? Galaxies distribu distribution uh, through the universe, of course. And um, most famously, the, in, the Norma, in, the in the constellation Norma, the supercluster. Now, the last one on the list is um, Robert Trumpler. <coughs> and uh, he noted that most spiral galaxies have their centers in a small bright nucleus and also come to the conclusion that the Magellanic clouds are gravitationally bound to the Milky Way galaxy. The next one and the last one is just to show you the lady who is doing these wonderful sketches. And uh, she looking became quite um, influenced by me asking her about the sketches for my book. And it's now a very great pleasure for me to hand over the original sketches, the book for preserve. Um, I can just hold up and show you all this is what it looked like. Uh, it's the original sketches. And uh, I want to um, hand it 
Thank you very much, Mark uh, I hope that the observers will be allowed to use these in articles. Uh, because especially some of the South African uh, people in here, you know, haven't been honored enough, and I, I think it's wonderful to have really nice pictures of them. It's masterpieces, yes. I can assure you. Yes. Well, thank you. I just want to say how much I always appreciate your poetical sense of, of the, the universe. And, you know, I've corrected back those articles for a long time for, for the Astronomical Society. And, uh, and um, uh, we, uh, that meant I had to read them in detail. And, and I enjoyed every word of it, I must say. Thank you, thank you very much. We now have a presentation from Margaret as a thank you for your very gracious gift to the society and for making the presentation today. God bless you. Yes. And for you.